first I'll speak in English language and then in Hindi. Today, long time back, Christ was born. You all know the story of His birth and of all the sufferings He had to go through. He is the one who has given us a model of a Sahaja For He didn't live for Himself, in no way, but He lived for others, working out the Agya Chakra. You may be divine, you may be very powerful, but this world is so cruel that they don't understand spirituality. They don't understand the spiritual greatness. Not only that, but there are many factors which attack spirituality. They have always done it. Every saint has suffered a lot, but I think Christ has suffered the most As you know, He was endowed with all the powers of Sri Ganesh as He is the reincarnation of Sri Ganesh. The first of them was His innocence. He was the eternal child, we should say, that He couldn't understand the cruelties and the hypocrisy of this stupid world. Still, if you understand, what can you do about it? But with great courage he took birth in the country where people had no idea of spirituality. I have read a book about him saying that he came to Kashmir we, he met one of my forefathers, Shalivana. It's very interesting because it's all in Sanskrit and the writer perhaps did not know Sanskrit, so he has given everything in Sanskrit language, which is not very congenial, I'm sure to the Western people. Thank God he didn't know Sanskrit, otherwise it would have been very dangerous. It's written in that, that he asked Christ, why have you come to India? So he said, this is my country. That's why I've come here where people respect spirituality. But I live among people who do not understand spirituality at all. His uh, conversation with him was very, very interesting because Shalivana said that there is more reason that you should go back to your country and teach them Nirmala Tattvam. That's the principle of purification. Went back after three and a half years, he was crucified. I personally think the big difference between the Western execution and Indian is that 
purpose. In the West, healing is a very great profession. With the slightest pretext, they kill people. Anybody who is a saint, saint was killed or they call him a madcap. It's the best way to avoid spirituality. While in India, if a saint says anything, then he's not challenged, never, but they believe in it. Because he's a saint, he's a much higher personality than we are. Though there were very nasty people around and they tortured them, but as a whole the public, the people, respected them. If there are false gurus, normally they don't stay in this country because they know they'll be found out. Also they are so money oriented that they go to America or to some foreign countries and settle down there to make money. This is one of the signs, one should say. This may be one of the reasons why Christ was born in a very, very ordinary family. He had no proper bed to sleep as a child was. Is all described where he slept, how his mother and father lived in a place where there were cows and calves. It was to show that spirituality doesn't need any luxury, doesn't need any pomp and show. It is a power within. It is a glow and the light within, which shows Automatically, you don't have to do anything to show it off. Such a person doesn't have any sense of money and other things as possessions. He was bothered about people who were suffering physically, even the lepers. And he tried to cure them. He tried to help so many people who were sick physically because at that time there were no hospitals, no doctors, so his attention was drawn to people who were suffering physically. Also mentally he tried to prepare them. There are so many beautiful sermons on the mount. In a way, that time, people were not so materialistic, so they listened to him. We can't say how many understood. It's very important that if you are not a realized soul, then it's difficult to understand spirituality. The one who is talking about spirituality and the one who is listening to this, both of them 
have to have minimum of realization. So from his beautiful life that I see, we have to learn that unless and until we are realized so we will be torturing the Spirit of Christ. We have seen it's happening, all those who talk of Christ. He has said it very clearly. He'll be calling me Christ, Christ, I won't recognize you. Very clearly he has said it. I don't know why they didn't remove it from the Bible. It means those who will talk and preach and dress up to show off that they are spiritual in the name of Christ, he will not recognize them. It's as simple as that. And this time now when is the last judgment, he is going to judge the whole world on the basis of spirituality, which means vibrations. His judgment has already started. I have seen it. You can see in so many countries, things are just disappearing. All their ego, all their aggressiveness, all their cruelties are being challenged. And those who did wrong in the war also are taken to task. So in the history also, those who have done wrong to any community, to any people, they all will be taken to task. They had no business to be aggressive on people and to torture them. This is what is Sri Ganesha's principle, acting through surgery. Christ didn't say that, but he did say there will be last judgment. On one side, he was very kind and compassionate. On the other side, he was really Sri Ganesha because he took a hunter to hit the people who were selling things in the temple. You cannot have business in the name of religion. What a big thing it is to understand. But the Christians didn't follow that, they did not. I don't know where have they gone. As we have Mahatma Gandhi who talked of spirituality and nothing else. Adhyat, all the time. But his successors who came put him somewhere with his spirituality and started a new world, new ideas and a new style of life. Those who are supposed to be his followers are now wanting to have many pubs. and also all kinds of things. Can you imagine? This Congress was started by Mahatma Gandhi. And the Congress Walas are doing all this. Where are they going to lead? The beauty of this country is the treasure of this country is spirituality. Instead of taking to spirituality, where are they going? 
They may not be Christians, but they respect Christ. They respect Bible. I must tell you, it's a fact. People don't know. They are not Christians, means in the sense they are not baptized, but they respect because they understand that there was so much of spirituality about Christ. He was the personification of spirituality. That's the beauty of Indians. If somebody is a Hindu or a Muslim, makes no difference. There were many Muslims who were saints and Sufis in India. They are all respected by everyone, whether they are Muslims or Hindus. So for Christ, nobody has any objection at all. On the contrary, you saw yesterday how they were all happy about it because they are realized souls. But even if they are not, in this country Christ is very much respected. They can't understand. How can they scrutinize the life of Christ? How can they judge Him and how can they make vulgar films about Him? This they can't bear it because the respect that they have for spirituality exists very much more than it exists outside. Because in the name of Christ, people have done such a lot of wrong, such a lot of killing has been done. All kinds of wrong things have been accepted. With all this, one doesn't understand how they have judged Christ. For example, what I know in England I saw I was shocked that if somebody dies they drink, if somebody is born they drink. Drinking is the only way they have relationships. How can you drink? I asked him, he said, why? Christ created wine? I said, when? In a wedding, I said, in a wedding, that was not wine, that was just the juice of their grapes that they grew there. We call it drakshas in our language. How can that be wine? It has to be fermented, it has to be rotten. How can that be? So this is biggest dharma to drink. But in India we know, though nobody has said anything against drinking, but we know drinking is a sinful thing. You see it every day. Everybody knows that if you drink, you become absolutely out of your mind. There's nothing to be said <laughs> on a religious platform, but everybody knows that what is drinking is. Not that people abroad don't know, they also know, but somehow it has become a fashion. Even in un our country it has now been introduced, I don't know how, after independence people have started drinking. Every party they drink, also in the name of Christ on Christmas Day. It's such an insult to His beautiful holy life. So when they came on this earth, perhaps all their powers of holiness were destroyed. The very good thing about India, Indians is that at least they respect, they respect a holy place. 
that is something good about. And they know what is holiness is. Now of course they are becoming very modern and Americanized, but still they know what is wrong, what should not be done. With Sahaja Yoga now I am very happy to say that the foreign Sahaja Yogis also have become very beautiful. I am surprised because in their culture there is no spirituality. But I don't know how they left all that nonsense and have come out like lotuses beautifully with such beautiful fragrance of spirituality. This is something, a miracle. Everybody says, Mother, we can't believe it. How could have happened? How did you manage this? I would say it's the blessing of Christ. They saw how people are working out in the name of Christ in a very degraded manner and they developed a kind of a awareness that definitely something wrong with this. This is not Christ. This is not His holy life they are depicting. It's something else. And that is how I think in the West there's a greater urge, greater ascending force. Yesterday somebody came and told me, Mother, there is no collective meditation. I was very happy to hear that. What is most important is meditation in such No doubt about it. But the foreigners do meditation much more than Indians do, very surprising. And foreign men and women are very highly equipped, I must say, as far as spirituality is concerned. Especially Russians, I was surprised that in America they told me, Mother, these Americans are not surgeons. I said, why? They don't have that respect for me. They don't meditate. Those who do not meditate are not Sahaja Yogis. I said, I agree. And they make all of them, all the Americans to meditate. I don't know why in these Eastern Bloc people, Bulgarians and Russians and all these, Romanians, how they have taken to Sahaja Yoga so much. Of course, they had the curse of communism on them. Maybe that they felt that they have missed something in life and they went deep down into themselves and that is how they have achieved it. 